Sorry, everyone, for the technical difficulties. We'll be up in just about five minutes. Are we ready, Shiva? Yes, I'm ready to go. So sorry, everyone, for the delay. It won't happen again, but you know, these uh, unexpected updates sometimes on your computer are very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, no problem, Shabha. No problem Sorry, whatsoever. Please, uh, you uh, know. Hello, Shabha. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, okay, are you welcome. ready? Well, yes, surely we are welcome. To oh, okay, to great. Thank you. Person. Thank you very much. This, this, okay. this is Dr. Shabhi Zaidi welcoming everybody on behalf of Sadiq International Virtual University. Welcome. This is springtime. I hope you're having a good time everywhere, wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And Shifa will open it and inshallah we'll start immediately. So surely all yours then. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. And we apologize for the delay, but it was due to technical glitches. Uh, Today we are going to talk about technical and vocational training and education, or TVET. That's an umbrella to encompass education and training activities. Uh, in this webinar, my colleagues, Dr. Soleiman Ahmadi from Shahid PhD University of Medical Sciences, is Doctor of Medicine, PhD in Medical Education, and Associate Professor of Medical Education. Dean of Virtual School of Medical Education and Management at Shahid PhD University of Medical Sciences. Dr. Yadullah Zarezadeh, uh, PhD, Associate Professor of Medical Education and Director of International Affairs, Kurdistan University of Medical Sciences. Uh, Ms. Sara Shahwazi, uh, PhD student of medical education, lecturer at Shahid PhD University of Medical Sciences, nursing lecturer in Shah Rekord University of Medical Sciences. And I'm Shola Pigdeli, uh, and it's my pleasure to be with every one of you in this webinar. Uh, 
As you know, education is the most important component in development of nations and humankind. And it's the most crucial factor in attaining the ideals of peace, freedom, and social justice. Education contributes to human mind by the intelligence, sensitivity, aesthetic sense, personal responsibility, and spiritual values. In this regard, technical and vocational education and training are important to empower nations. In this webinar, the speakers will try to briefly introduce the theoretical foundations, pedagogical principles, models of TVET and e-learning in TVET, and they will share the experiences of skills training in the Iranian context. Uh, please type your questions in the chat box and you can ask your questions at the end of the session. They can give you a turn to ask your questions orally or uh, the team will answer your written questions. First of all, we're going to start with a presentation of Dr. Zoya Zadeh that will be shared by my colleagues. Uh, Ms. Shahbaz, yes, thank you. Uh, Dr. Zoya Zadeh has difficulty in uh, connecting to the internet because of the low internet speed. He shared his slides with us. We will listen to his sayings, and at the end, if he can join us, he will answer the questions that you have in this regard. Yes, please. Good afternoon. It's a great honor to be here with you today. You are the elite of education. My name is Yadullah Zarezadeh. I am Associate Professor of Medical Education in Kurdistan University of Medical Sciences in Sanandaj, Iran. At the beginning of my short speech, I would like to thank Professor Shabih Zaidi and his respected colleagues in SIVU and also Dr. Beidili for time and effort taken to provide this educational platform for all of us to learn from one another. Today, I will provide a short introduction to the theoretical and philosophical underpinnings of Tibet, albeit from my own perspective. Thank you very much for attending and listening to me. We have already provided the definition of Tibet in our handout, so I do not repeat that again due to time limitations, but it's good to keep in mind that vocational, technical education and training is any form of education designed for preparing an individual for employment in an occupation or for helping him or her to remain productive and successful in an occupation. Tivet is about the term and concepts such as job, work, being productive, human development, psychomotor skills, and cognitive skills. If so, it's about a prosperity, well-being, and economic growth. It is worth mentioning that Hanshuk from Stanford University saw a clear relationship between cognitive skills of the workforce and economic growth. It is evident that cognitive skills of the workforce is related to the quality and quantity of the TVET programs in each country, especially in our time that we are entering a new era where everything is changing and will dramatically change in future. In the beginning of the fourth industrial revolution in which knowledge and know-how are the keys to success, TVET programs are the best form of education for preparing the vast majority of people for this new era. Let me directly quote Klaus Schwab, the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum in this regard. We stand on the brink of technological revolution that will fundamentally alter the way we live, work, and relate to one another. In its scale, scope, and complexity, the transformation will be unlike anything humankind has experienced before.
The first rational and theory underpinning TVET that I want to mention here is the endogenous growth theory, which maintains that the economic growth is primarily the result of internal forces rather than external forces. One of the main components of internal forces in each country is its human capital. You know better than me that human capital is enriched and enhanced through human development programs such as TVET. So it seems high quality nationwide TVET programs are one of the forces for endogenous long-term sustainable economic growth. As mentioned above, TVET is about development, responsibility, choice, and freedom to learn. So we are talking about adult learners. There are founding theories and principles for adult learning. We shall remember Nawels here, who described andragogy as the science and the art of helping adults to learn. Nawels rightly described some basic assumptions about adult learners that I briefly recount them here. Adults have learning needs that can be contextualized to their lives. They have a self responsibility for their choices and goals. They have life experiences to build their learning upon them. They are ready to learn as they know its value, impact, and results. They are mostly internally motivated to learn and change. It's clearly evident that these assumptions of andragogy are related to any adult learning program, including Tibet. Hyutagogy is a more humanistic approach to learning in which we can imagine a self-determined learner who knows how to learn and what to learn, formulates questions and problems to be answered. Hyotagogy has some implications for TVET because it is more democratic, puts more emphasis on intrinsic motivations, it is humanistic, emancipatory, and gives the learner freedom of choice and pace of learning. We need all these characteristics in a well-designed TVET program, remembering that we are entering a new era that traditional ways of teaching and learning may be challenged seriously. The world is rapidly changing. Fourth industrial revolution is on the way and globalization of everything is happening. The rearrangement of workplace and changing in the way of doing things are inevitable. These changes may result in social exclusion, isolation, unemployment, and polarization of professional technical jobs for millions of people all over the world. Development and empowerment through TVET programs for vast majority of people and helping them in their required transformation seems to be one of the ways to combat this situation. Transformative learning is a deeper level learning that involves creativity, critical thinking, emotional self-awareness, consciousness, and change in one's perspective leading to positive change. It seems TVET programs can help people to transform their lives, which is very much needed. Technical vocational education and training is aimed at advancement of skills and cognition, which result in empowerment and more freedom. Ferrari introduced an approach to education which creates an understanding of power, oppression, domination, and ideology. Central to his educational theory was consciousness, the way learners looked at the world and themselves, their beliefs, ethics, fears, and motives, and how these in turn shaped their behavior in terms of learning and doing. From the standpoint of this critical theory, 
Tibet can be transformative and liberating. Therefore, I argue that transformative learning theory, particularly the works of Ferri, are one of the main theories that the Tibet programs must be based upon. The concept of reflection first introduced by John Diori in Western educational literature had been already mentioned in Masnavi, the masterpiece of the 13th century Iranian poet and mystic Rumi. For example, a person's worth lies in his thoughts alone. Apart from that, we are only flesh and bone. You will be a rose if all your thoughts are selfless. If selfish, just a thorn, which is deemed worthless. According to Diori, reflective learning should include recalling the experience and the event, and then posing a question to discover why things happened the way they did, and what possible actions could have created a different account. Theory maintained that we do not learn from experience directly, but we learn from reflection on experience. This concept was formulated by Donald Schoen as reflection on action and reflection in action. Tibet, as its name suggests, is a form of experiential learning by its nature. So we can argue that without reflection, the learner will not be able to deeply learn from practice. It could be concluded that reflective learning using different models of shown, gives, called, and others must be a part of any TVET program. According to WFME, CPD includes all activities that healthcare professionals undertake formally and informally in order to maintain, update, develop, and enhance their knowledge, skills, and attitudes in response to the changing needs of their patients. Engaging in CPD is a professional obligation, but also a requirement for enhancing the quality of healthcare. CPD as a form of situated learning explained by Leib and Wagner in 1990 is and will be an important part of medical education. Professionals are more inclined to learn from experience directly related to their jobs rather than from abstract knowledge transferring classes. CPD can be designed and conducted in TVS programs based on learning theories mentioned here and elsewhere. New technologies and procedures such as virtual reality, precision medicine, healthcare wearables, artificial organs, 3D printing, tissue engineering, wireless brain sensors, robotic surgery, smart inhalers, to mention but a few, have already emerged and are taking the central stage in medicine. This will change the face and practice of medicine dramatically. All of these new features can be introduced into medical practice through TVET programs using different models that is discussed by my colleagues based on the educational theories that I just mentioned here. Based on what I just tried to say about new technologies, it can be concluded that new TVET programs will be situated in technology-rich innovative learning environments. The term to describe such environment and framework is cybergogy, which has been defined as a framework for creating engaged learning online. In this new cybergogy environment, both teachers and students and program designers must develop their technology trend awareness to be able to remain update. I suggest 
universities design technology trend awareness as a pivot program for their audience. One of the lessons of history extracted by Will Durant in his great book, The Story of Civilization, is that competition and collaboration made civilization possible. It seems competition prevails. Competition requires getting better because your rivals are getting better. As basketball coach Pat Riley once said, if you are not getting better, you are getting worse. So, a down-to-earth philosophy of Tibet is getting better. Humanistic approaches mentioned here help us design Tibet programs for people to get better based on their own choices, their own speeds, and their own preferred directions. The hierarchy of needs presented by Maslow is well known to all of us and widely accepted. According to the hierarchy of needs, we humans have different needs that make a hierarchy starting from physiological needs at the lowest level and moves upward to self-actualization, which represents the highest order motivations which drive us to realize our true potentials and achieve our best ideal self. Although Tibet programs can be designed to meet human needs at any level, but they can help people to move upward to create their ideal personalities. In this short speech, I tried to talk about theoretical underpinnings of Tibet from different perspectives, such as endogenous growth theory, educational and known theories like andragogy and experiential learning, emancipatory transformative critical reflective theories, new concepts such as heotagogy and cybergogy, and also psychology of human needs, and lastly, down-to-earth everyday working theory of getting better. I hope I have been able to do the justice to the subject considering time limitations and, of course, limitations of myself and my knowledge. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Uh, I want to appreciate Dr. Zarazare for his wonderful presentation, and I would like to ask Dr. Ahmadi to join us and start this. Please write down your questions in the chat box or Q and A section. Uh, may I please give me the questions. camera access? Yes, two seconds. I think you, uh, everyone should be able to now. Uh, I'm trying to access the, yes, that's true. Thank you, Dr. Ahmadi. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, have a nice time. I'm Suleiman Ahmadi. I did uh, actually my medical school. So do you have my... Do you have my slide? Uh, no, you have to open it, Dr. Ahmadi, please. Open and share your screen with us. I, I have opened it. Let's, let's, let's uh, I shared my, is that okay? Uh, no. You may have to go into the, um, into Zoom and share the window with the slides. Currently okay. sharing the folders, the folder slides. Um, new share? Or we try again? Screen. Screen. Screen? Yeah. So. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Sorry for interruption. Uh, hello, everybody. Have a nice time. I'm Soleiman Ahmadi. Actually, I did my uh, medical doctorate at Iran and I did my 
PhD at Karolinska Institute in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, first of all, I would express my thanks to Professor Shabi Zaidi, uh, Chancellor of Assad International Virtual University, for his great leadership manner and effort in designing and launching such an excellent uh, educational platform. Indeed, in this uh, initiative, scholar come along with together and uh, many people who are looking to learn around the world. And it has created an opportunity for everyone to communicate with the language of science and forming a scientific community of practitioners. In this presentation, uh, I'm going to talk about and the role of TWIT, the trends and skill development training system. And also I will talk about the pedagogical perspective of TWIT, the role of modern technology and e-learning play in TWIT and a proposal. And finally, I will propose a framework for TWIT. So let's start with the first section of my presentation. Once we are talking about the TWIT, we are considering and we are dealing with three different uh, concepts. Skill development, TWIT ecosystem, and medical education. Concerning the skill development, uh, the acquisition of the knowledge and skill for the world of work is very crucial and important. Three components of the practical competency, knows how and the attitude are necessary to perform a trade or occupation in the labor market. So, TWIT or technical and vocational education and training is the way or is the source of skills acquisition. In this type of uh, skill development, we have four different type of skill. The, four, uh, the first type is basic or even the foundation skill, like the literacy and the numeracy skill necessary for getting the work and the some very primary skill. Once we talking about the vocational uh, or technical skill as a second type of skill, is specialized skill like knowledge or know-how needed to perform specific duty or a special task. The second, the third type of skill are professional skills uh, or personal skill. This kind of skill is very required for you know, getting the communication uh, and individual attributes relevant to work, like the honesty, integrity, work, and some ethical or some other uh, indicator for professional behavior. And the, the last one is uh, the core skill. The core skill is the subject that we are talking about. The core skill is the ability to learn and adapt or to read, write, communicate with each other, listening, and lots of uh, skill or write, uh, like the creativity, solving the problem, and different kind of core work skill. So, once we're talking about the educational system, there is a three different educational system. One is the formal one, the second is the non-formal, and the third one is the informal. When we're talking about the ecology of the keyword, we are dealing with these uh, three kind of formal system that is related to the uh, TWIT. So the yeah, another uh, kind of uh, categorization is the model of TWIT. We have different model of TWIT. The first model, I just, okay. 
The, force, the first model of Tibet around the world is the liberal market economic model. Uh, this kind of model more used in UK and Australia, and it's completely uh, relying on the private market led by industry and other private sector. The second model of the uh, Tibet is the state regulator bureaucratic model, mostly used in Italy, Sweden, and Finland. This kind of uh, uh, model is uh, based on national education system defined for wide and finance, vocational education, and training. Uh, it's a more public private partnership and the firm industry and labor union function mainly on the consultative level. But the third one is dual system model, uh, mostly used in Germany, Australia, Switzerland, Denmark, and Norway. Uh, this dual system consists of strong both on public and the private collaboration. And this most fit model concerning the Tibet uh, courses. So uh, also each country has its uh, special economic situation and the definition and application of the most uh, Tibet models are based on this kind of situation. So there are lots of principles. Some of these principles are basic principles in order to have an effective and uh, Tibet skills system. This kind of uh, pr principle uh, we have uh, categorized in six main category. The first category or the first principle for designing and implementation a successful keyword is the relevance to a labor market. The keyword courses and programs have to relevance related to the labor market. The second one is strong involvement of the private sector. This is very important factor in Tibet system. Good access to training is the short one. And the next one is high quality of delivery. The fifth one is secure and uninterrupted financing. Financing of this kind of uh, technical and vocational training courses are very important and the uh, inclusion of core work skill that we were talking about this kind of skill is important and as a principle of the given. So once uh, an institution or a uh, school uh, gonna to design and implement a core skill in order to deliver Tibet program, a cyclic approach for core skill implementation is very important. In this cyclic approach, the first step is an identification of the core skill for employment or for stakeholder. The second one is development and mapping of the competency for standard, the curriculum and the resource. And the third one is mapping or revision for development of delivery of assessment and reporting some practices. Professional development is very important, like the CPD, continuous professional development that my colleague, Dr. Zara, have already raised. Awareness for raising social marketing for core skill among employee partner and student. And the uh, next step for this cycling in monitoring, the monitoring and or impact assessment of core skill for employability and implementation is very important. So based on this uh, model and the situation, uh, there has been some challenges once uh, an institution going to implement a Tibet program. Based on the UNESCO report, there are main four main challenges. The first one is this agreement on responsibility for imparting transferable skill in 
keyword. The second one is rigid and heavily curricular that impact innovative teaching and learning. And the third one is lack of capacity to develop and or apply innovative teaching method. And the last one is lack of adequate assessment method. These four challenges is common around the different uh, institution and the community. If we look to the, this uh, uh, diagram, we should we sh see the lack of skill is a constraining economic activity and it's, uh, you know, inhibit the effective getting a job. In this uh, diagram, we can see the different situation and in different region uh, that uh, there is uh, disparity among this kind of report. So uh, we did uh, that model and that uh, situation and uh, with the challenge that sometimes TWIT program are facing, we need to address this kind of challenges. Uh, in the following section, I will discuss about uh, some of the tackling strategy that we should consider in order to, you know, uh, bridge the gap and solve the problem and solve the challenges. Let's start with the second part of my presentation. The second part of my presentation is about the uh, digital age and tools. A uh, new uh, tilt and change and trend in the global perspective uh, has mm, new driver of change and trend in tilt has different uh, factor and different uh, uh, elements that uh, cause different trends. The first one is demographic changing. The second one is economic globalization. The economic globalization is another clear trend among the university and world by international organization or multinational cooperation also continue to increase in this kind of challenges. Internet everywhere or ubiquitous internet is the another factor the, to explosive the growth of uh, growth in the quality and quantity of information available and different information and security of information. This kind of uh, factor makes some trend in this era. The, the fourth trend is cross-disciplinary technology integration. Uh, it's uh, driving the creation of major cross-disciplinary technology integration that are more and more strongly connected to social and human aspiration. The fifth trend is environmental. Uh, the lots of factor and uh, there is lots of discussion around this issue because of the shortage of time. I'm not going to talk about uh, in detail. And the sixth one in natural resource use, usage efficiency. Also emerging ICT trend, we, we can see different and new technology and modern technology like the IoT, Internet of Things, cloud computing, big data, artificial intelligence, application service, and all of this emerging ICT make the new ecosystem for us. The, most uh, famous and the most uh, effective one is AI or artificial intelligence and big data or cloud computing that have affect different uh, industry, agriculture, logistic, network, automatic and other systems. Or may we, we have uh, most five technology that is uh, particular uh, considered for driving innovative manner of TV. We can uh, show and we can say the Yobikos 
computing, collaborative technology, extended reality, artificial intelligence, and blockchains are the most important and effective one. So the next uh, additional age and pivot is very important for our uh, client. Kabo has uh, a good quotation. He has said that technology driving transformation are defining the role of education, the value of knowledge and skills, non-formal learning, third space literacy and alternative mechanism for certification are emerging throughout the world, aiming to prepare use for entering the job market and or rapidly advances information and communication technology and the change in the culture of work in digital world require worker to acquire not only technological competency but also many soft skills needed. For future quali uh, qualification and skill requirement from Tibet, we need to categorize the competencies. Some of these competency and skill are technical one, and some are personal. Some uh, has, uh, you know, categorized in the must skill, some can have been categorized in the should skill, and some other are categorized around the category of better one. And with different uh, uh, communication and with different skill uh, in the technical and personal uh, era, we can consider very effective and we can uh, develop very important and uh, beneficial TVL program. So have a look uh, to the uh, another uh, data about the UNESCO. UNESCO has a special uh, committee or department, uh, the UNIVAC, International Center for Technical and Vocational Education and Training. Uh, they issue some regular uh, report about the TWITs. Based on their survey, uh, they have uh, shown three biggest change that have occurred in the world of work over the past five years, uh, like the growth in ICT and digitalization based on the TWIT institution opinion. And even based on the TWIT practitioner, girls in ICT and digitalization have made and biggest change around the last five years. Rapid technology changes and also increased automation are very important and very main changes during this survey. Once we uh, talk about the stage of the evolution toward an information society for technical and vocational education and training, uh, we have a special uh, standard or indicator for this that we call is IDI, is standing for ICT Development Index. ICT Development Index can contain ICT readiness, ICT use, and ICT capability that make ICT impact and uh, the outcome of ICT shows in this manner. So based on this indicator, there is uh, therefore a great uh, disparity uh, around the different region of the, around the world. Uh, this kind of great disparity in level of ICT development between the country of the region. As shown, for example, in this uh, slide, the Asia Pacific region has the largest range of ICT index or IDI index value in the world. If we consider the infrastructure, 
we can see the same result and in the uh, ICT development index based on the country at the region of Asia and uh, Pacific. Uh, in this slide, you can you could see why the Asia region is the location of three uh, biggest and three of the 10 most ICT developed country. Uh, I mean, South Korea, Hong Kong and Japan, but also is the home or location of the unfortunately less ICT developed nation like the Afghanistan and other country. So after this uh, digital age and the, uh, you know, the driver change that technology bring for Tibet, we uh, will discuss about the theoretical and pedag pedagogical perspective from the uh, Tibet pedagogy. A theoretical perspective uh, for the Tibet, we can use many different items based on the ICT. It's uh, more about the theoretical training and uh, from the pedagogical perspective, like the flexible and blended learning, curriculum integration, assessment, and even the meeting special learning need. For example, ICT enhanced innovation pedagogy in Tibet in the Asia Pacific based on the UNESCO report in 2020, it shows that ICT is a powerful means to increase access to quality and lifeline tibets and enhance their relevance and authenticity of learning and it's enable workplace to be uh, brought into learning. Or uh, this is really important and very, good example of the ones we talking about the hands-on practical training. However, it's uh, very clear that hands-on practical training cannot be replaced by technology. But if we consider this uh, uh, phenomenon that the learning is a social phenomenon, and uh, based on this assumption that we can consider the learning from the perspective of social phenomenon. Uh, in this case, the modern technology are able to enhance the acquisition of the practical skill. So it's very important. I mean, I just you know rephrase or paraphrase my talk about this uh, important statement. If we consider learning as a social phenomenon, then technology can make great impact on practical skill acquisition. So from the perspective of the uh, Tibet uh, technology and uh, pedagogical perspective of the program, ICT enhanced pedagogy can support learning in different way. For example, it's promote flexible lifeline learning, it's provide authentic and simulated learning. It's enhanced learning engagement and social learning. And finally, it's promote reflective learning and knowledge creation, like the reflective practitioner that's I've already met. So in the last, uh, the fourth part of my presentation, I will talk about the application of technology enhanced learning environment and theory. This is very important uh, uh, graph. It shows that the number of training center and virtual training courses that taught from 2008 to 2015. As you see in 2008, we, uh, eight, we just have one training center with one uh, virtual or electronic courses. And during this time in 2015, we have 50 training center and 
152 uh, uh, virtual courses for TBIT. So it showed that the dramatic increase and dramatic uh, number of uh, training center and uh, different uh, courses, e-learning courses, virtual courses uh, concerning the TBIT we had. So application of te uh, tele or technology enhanced learning environment in TIVIT uh, is uh, in four or five different uh, area or the aspect of technology. One is the mobile learning. Application of mobile learning in TIVIT is completely clear. Virtual technology is the another one. TUIs or tangible user interface. And finally, virtual learning are very important. For example, uh, in the mobile learning, based on the definition, Crompton, by assuming that it's encompass learning across multiple contexts through social and content interaction using personal electronic devices. Based on the study have been conducted by the uh, Donald Way in 2017, as you see in this uh, slide, uh, this uh, study that have been conducted by the Donald Way with a systematic review and evaluated the effect of mobile learning or M learning intervention on the high scale professional education at the four level. I mean, the knowledge, skill, attitude, satisfaction. In this slide, you could see description of the study and the result of this study. It's very interesting uh, result of this study that the mobile learning has a clear impact on skill learning rather than the knowledge. So this is a very important aspect of using mobile learning and the TWET program. The other one is the application of tele is the virtual technology because of the shortage of time. I just quickly move around these slides and the visual technology and even the study have been done in Switzerland for visual technology and also the TOI and the tangible user interface. You can see a man that is using the kinetic and the feedback and reflection getting and even the virtual reality simulation, different generation of this simulation, and based on the systematic review efficacy of the virtual patient in medical education, uh, meta-analysis show that uh, it's very effective in the TWIT program and different kinds. So finally, in my last uh, uh, section of presentation, I will try to uh, show you a purpose, a model or framework for institution or the, for the university that are going to uh, design and implement uh, any TWET or different kind of TWET program. In this framework, this model show a central uh, part of the TWET program. At first step, uh, to design an effective and efficient virtual TWET uh, institution, they need to create three level for the central planning and technical support service system. These three levels are the institutional, instructional, and infrastructural. And in the two middle column of the the table, the six service units are organized uh, according to their main function, mainly, I mean, planning, evaluating, or mainly implementing or testing. And according to the level of at which uh, they operate uh, based on institutional, instructional, and infrastructural level. This visual organization illustrates how 
the six units are interrelated and how they should interact at six subsystem or an integrated uh, system to central services. In the end, the result of created such an institution are interrelated with each other. And this uh, process model uh, help designer and uh, curricular or course developer for uh, TVET's program once they are going to create and uh, define this kind of program. So in this uh, presentation, uh, I have tried to discuss about the important role and the high situation of the uh, TWET has in medical sciences. And today, technical education and TWET play an important role even in the uh, medical education and for medical education graduates. I stated uh, the models and the features and their principle and dimension of TVET program. I tried to clarify the, the global trend and the global uh, view toward the, the TVET. And then I tried to express the role of modern technology and the place in which uh, TVET has a, a skill development. And also I have um, this training uh, can use new technology. Finally, by presenting a conceptual model, uh, I explained the dimension and the level of implementation of a skill program at level of an institution. And I, so I provide, as you see, and the last slide, a proposed conceptual framework or model for the virtual implementation of the TWET course at the institutional level. Thank you for your uh, kind attention and uh, thank you for our participant. Uh, I'm in the service if you ask a question. I appreciate it, Dr. Ahmadi. Thank you very much for this wonderful, informative presentation. Now I want to ask Ms. Shahbazi to start with hers. Ms. Shahbazi, please proceed. Thank you, dear uh, Dr. Big Daly, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. And uh, a special thanks to the Southern International uh, Virtual University for giving me this great uh, um, opportunity. It's an honor to be here with you. Uh, I'm uh, Sarah Shafazi, PhD candidate of medical education uh, of Shaikh PhD University of Medical Sciences and faculty member of Shahrikord University of uh, Medical Sciences, uh, and uh, I'm uh, going to speak about TWIT and lessons learned to a uh, global view uh, and uh, share with you a national uh, experience of TWIT in uh, Iran. My presentation outline including Tibet system in Iran and compare with some countries, challenges of Tibet in Iran and the National Center of Health Vocational Education and uh, uh, Training. As a result of the emergence of developments and changing lifestyle, the labor market also changes and requires a diverse range of demands uh, of the skilled human resources. The appropriate and logical response to the changing needs of the labor market is the responsibility of institutions and educational organizations. All over the world, these organizations work under the umbrella of technical and vocational education and uh, training, um, uh, which uh, is um, known as the TBET. 
According to UNESCO and International Labor Organization, TUET refers to aspect of the educational process involving, in addition to general education, the study of technologies and related sciences and the acquisition of practical skills and knowledge, attitudes, and understanding relating to occupants in various sectors of economic and social life. Here, I'd like to assess the situation of Tibet in Iran uh, with some statistical information provided in the uh, World Bank report and compare it with some countries uh, in uh, the world. As you see in this slide, the total population of Iran is 82.9 million, and 30.2% of them are uh, 50 to 24 years old. Uh, it means about 10 million people, but uh, only 763,000 of uh, them enroll in secondary vocational programs, and 34% uh, of them uh, are women. It means that this indicates that a significant number of Iran's young people does not participate in vocational uh, education. Let's take a look at Iraq's table. We are facing a similar situation in Iraq. 19.8% of uh, total populations are 50 to 24 years old, and uh, uh, only 70.9% of them enroll in secondary vocational uh, programs. In, the, in this number, in uh, Turkey is 2.7 million, in Germany is 1.3 million, and uh, in uh, United Kingdom is 2.2 million. At a glance, it can be seen that the rate of participation in uh, TWET programs in European countries is much more significant than in the Middle East. The participation rate in, uh, in uh, these countries for women uh, are uh, also uh, high. Of course, in Japan and South Korea, the participation rate in TV programs are really high and uh, at about 85%. Let's take a look back at the study of uh, TV in Iran. Iran Technical and Vocational Training Organization, which is uh, known as uh, TV2, uh, plays a, a fundamental role in uh, TV system. In Iran, there is an approach difference for TWET at the view of the two ministries. In the Ministry of Science, Research and Technology, there is an industrial and technical approach, but in Ministry of Health and Medical Education, the approach is non-technical. In Iran, the model of technical and vocational education and training is unique and is divided in, uh, in, into two categories, TWET formal education system and uh, TWET non-formal education uh, system. In Iran's TWET uh, education system, uh, TWET is not taught in primary and lower secondary education. Uh, first, I want to describe Tibet formal education uh, system. This education is offered in four levels, including diploma, associate, a bachelor, and a master's. This education starts from the second year of high school with the entry of students into the Kardanesh and Fani um, Baherfe high schools uh, and continues with entrance of the university until the master's degree. The other theoretical education system is non-formal system, which is provided for our learners in the community by the TV2 and uh, under the supervision of the Ministry of Cooperative Labor and Social uh, Welfare. As a whole, uh, this is the general picture of Iran's uh, system TWET. According to the World Bank report, Tibet in uh, Iran faces challenges of uh, challenges, including a lack of connection between formal and informal systems, a lack of a comprehensive Tibet system, a lack of consideration of labor market needs, 
lack of quality guarantee of TOX system in universal level, and the lack of diversity in attracting uh, TOX funding. The important thing to speak about is that one of the most important criteria for any training organization is to earn accreditation points. In the TOX system, the process is done by national qualification framework, which is known as NQF. Unfortunately, there is currently no NQF in Iran. And the Ministry of Education is responsible for assuring the quality of student programs in the formal TOX systems. And the Curriculum Development Office is responsible for quality assurance in the non-formal TOX system under the Iran Technical and Vocational Training Organization. Um, the second main gap is the activity in Iran was completely oriented towards industry and technical professions, while the community and the staff of the health system need general and specialized training in the field of health. Therefore, in Iran, there was a need for a system that would take into account the needs of all, and in addition to the industry and technical issues, considers health domain uh, education. Uh, following this need, uh, in uh, 2018, uh, the National Center of Health uh, Vocational Education and Training of the Islamic Republic of uh, Iran was established in the Ministry of Health and Medical Education and now offers various courses in the field of health. The main goals of the National Center of Health Vocational Education and Training, including organizing health stewards, the use of the existing uh, capacities to train still human resources in the field of health, establishing a accreditation system for health steward, improving the quality of health steward, and developing of health steward in line with the needs of society. The main task of these centers, including expanding of need-based and demand-oriented to it, a continuous educational needs assessment based on the strategic plans, organizing and directing health to it using successful international experiences, introducing and guiding the uh, graduate to the labor market through interaction with the governmental and non-governmental sectors, development of standards to executive centers and issuance and revocational licenses of executive centers and courses. Currently, 158 affiliated centers of the National Center of Health Vocational Education and Training are licensed to authentic uh, training courses throughout Iran. But only 25 centers actively offer various educational uh, courses. To conclude this presentation, I want to say perhaps it can be said that in Iran, TVX system should be combined to form a coalition in order to create sustainable national development. Based on the statistical information and due to the novelty of TWIT and each TWIT in Iran, I believe that the need for following activities should consider specifically in culture building, reviewing curriculum structures, designing appropriate practical work experience, training of instructors and their professional development, designing evaluation system and reporting methods, using new teaching methods in technology aid and a presentation to educational justice, and using the learning in vocational education and training and uh, health to it um, uh, and uh, um, uh, usage of uh, technology uh, to to it. Thank you for your uh, attention. Um, if uh, you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to uh, answer. Thank you so much and thank you for uh, your attention. I appreciate it, Ms. Chahwazi and all the presenters. Uh, we have two questions. The first one is asked by Dr. Shabi. 
it is about the difference between ped pedagogy and andragogy. And uh, Dr. Ahmadi, could you please answer this question? Uh, do you have my voice? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, but it's uh, uh, this question uh, related to Dr. Zarez. If he's uh, on, if we want to answer this question, it's okay. Otherwise, I will reply. Okay, uh, Dr. Zarez, do you hear us? Uh, can you activate uh, his microphone? Yes, Dr. Zarek, can you hear us? Okay, uh, can I can I answer the question? Yeah. Yes, please, because I think he, he cannot hear oh. us. Okay, uh, uh, actually, it's a very good question uh, with Professor. Uh, as, uh, we have two different kind of uh, categorization concerning the learning theory from the andragogy to pedagogy to heterogy. Once we talk about the pedagogy, uh, in a commonly and with specific use, we, uh, we uh, always concerning about the adult learning. Once, uh, the, because of there is two uh, different theory. Yes, the first theory is self-regulated or self-regulation uh, uh, theory. Based on this and uh, pedagogy perspective and theory, self-regulated concerning about the adult education and principle of adult education and adult learning. But once we talk about the hitagogy or hitagogy, we are concerning about the theory of self-determinant learning. Uh, this is very, uh, to some extent, new theory. Uh, I think it's raised from stereo with, with uh, Hayes and his colleague from 2010 and up there. And uh, this hitagogy, hitagogy theory based on the self-determinant uh, theory is mean that the learner and the people can learn and can set their learning from the childhood to adulthood. In contrast with the uh, pedagogy that we can use uh, sometime in pedagogy with the same parallel you know, definition. And the uh, pedagogy, because uh, people learn when they are adult, but in pedagogy, with the new perspective from the theoretical uh, learning theory, uh, is mainly focused on the, from the childhood to the uh, you know, adult or life lifeline learning. I, I, Sorry, do you have my voice? Uh, yeah. Yes, okay, we can okay. hear you. Yeah, thank Sorry. you. Uh, thank you for your response. And the second question is from Dr. Mubashar Iftikhar. He's saying that nowadays, uh, mobile devices are substitutes for human brain. How do you see the impact of reducing cognition and learning more complex jobs? Sorry, may I repeat the questions. Uh, yeah, he has mentioned that nowadays, mnemonic device as one's mobile device instead of okay. his or her brain. People do not use their brains anymore that much. And how do you see the impact of reducing cognition and learning more complex jobs? Uh, if if we, uh, I, I'm not uh, sure about this question and uh, what exactly uh, he mean about the question, but if we mean whether with mobile learning we can learn or the impact of mobile learning with technical and vocational training, which kind of question does he have? Uh, 
uh, I think he, uh, he's saying that because of using mobile devices, human cognition is reduced. Okay, okay. It's not functioning properly. So what is the impact on uh, learning complex jobs? I think we can we can keep the open this kind of question and it's not uh, you know directly related to the two system but it's very important question about the you know, mobile learning and its effect on the cognitive uh, domain of the learning here yeah. I, I, I would rather to keep the, open this kind of question and we can you know discuss more later about this okay thank you uh, and uh, to the best of my knowledge, we have two raised hands. And uh, Ms. Atiye Farihi, uh, could you please activate your mic and ask your question? Ms. Farihi. I cannot see her. Shafa, do you see her? Uh, she, she might not be in the room anymore. But there's also. Oh, a okay. And I think we have no more questions. Uh, Doctor Zarza, trying to, you know, getting the connect with us. Uh, please uh, activate this microphone. I'm not sure. If... Uh, and of course, we have. Uh, some more. Uh, hello. Please. Uh, yes, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, thanks for a nice presentation. Uh, my question is how can we implement these nice models in practice in our medical universities? Uh, do you mean, uh, sorry, do you mean the proposal? Proposed framework that I have already. Yes, showed. Uh, the, 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 oh. these frameworks, considering the context of all medical universities in Iran, it's, you know, uh, first uh, they have to pass the theoretical courses and then they practice uh, these, in, uh, these in, in, let's say, hospitals. But how can we implement this TVET in our universities? Okay, it doesn't matter, you know, if you are going to implement a TWIL program around your institution, the central support and service system you need for uh, TWIL at your institution. Based on this theoretical and framework, uh, uh, conceptual model and this framework, you can use different because of the shortage of time, I, I couldn't you know, describe completely this framework for you. That is why you are asking this kind of question. But we can use and we can adopt this uh, framework at your institution based on the, your you know, uh, level of uh, central pl planning and technical support and the system. For example, once uh, you have, uh, you are dealing with institutional level of your program, you can you know, set your policy strategy, you can uh, make your organization adapted to this kind of program partnership, or uh, once you're talking about the instructional level of uh, this program, we are, you are going to you know, define and design curricula, courses, lesson, pillar, media, material, and workshops, <coughs> or even for infrastructure, you're dealing yes, with but, the uh, teaching skill and other kind of, you know, uh, element that are, uh, play the main role in designing your TWIL program. Uh, yes, you're right. But, you know, uh, because we have to wait for policymakers um, that they start something in, in, in Tehran, let's say, and then um, other universities follow those um, policies. So in, in practice, nobody do something and everybody just waiting that somebody starts doing this event. Uh, I, 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 you know, that's why I was uh, talking about the policy of the, your institution from the institutional level, 
you can consider the policy of your institution. But if uh, you're gonna about the challenge for integrating of the, you know, e-learning, virtual learning, and TWET, there are lots of challenge and major, you know, challenges for this kind of uh, program. Thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Rostamian. There is another question from Ms. Nushin Mahmoud. Could you please activate your microphone and ask a question? Uh, Ms. Mahmoud? Uh, Shofa, could you please give her access to the mic? Yes, I think she, she might not be on any longer either. Oh, we, I see. Um, Dr. Shabi Zaidi's hand is raised here as well. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Dr. Shabi, are ready to hear your yes. question or comments? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, my compliments to all the speakers, facilitators, and uh, of course, surely yourself. Superb talks. I mean, goes without saying, a person who's almost ignorant in medical education like myself has been so educational. It's phenomenal. That's a compliment to all. My comments are on two things. One is the uh, where Dr. Ziazade, when you talk about andragogy, I was very impressed because Noel's is my favorite writer in medical education. And I regret to say that not many people know of him. Not many people read him. My comment is that, and this is what I said in Kufa University some 10 years ago also, that we should not be calling every education that we have in higher secondary or medical education pedagogy. It should be andragogy. Pedagogy is not self-driven. It is motivated by parents, by teachers, etc. You tell the students to do a certain thing, they do it. Andragogy is what we use in medical schools or in technical colleges, which is self-motivated, certain objectives, desire to excel, to make more money or to be more famous. <laughs> so my comment is only a comment people can consider it, that we should be using andragogy at the level of higher secondary and medical education, not pedagogy, because we're not immature learners. That's one. Second, the very interesting question that uh, Mubashir Tukhar raised about the possible cognitive de uh, decay due to mobile technology and everything. How interesting. Only this morning, I was talking to a clinical psychologist in New York, a practicing uh, pediatric clinical psychologist, who mentioned to me about a case a six-year-old boy was brought to her who could not use the hands. There was motor decay, motor, tactile, sensory, motor, and functional decay of all the fingers except for the thumbs. So after a great deal of investigation, they found out that the boy was the only child of working parents who was left to work on, on uh, video games. He used to use thumbs all the time for six years or five years or whatever. So his rest of the hand almost decayed and he could not think straight except through the video games. So my answer to Mubashir, if I can dare say, is that I think it is important that cognitive domain should be act kept active. Mental exercises, whether it's crossword puzzles or talking to people or conversation generally, or even gossiping to keep the mind active. Otherwise, this technology will overtake us and the mind will change to nothing except uh, what you might call collection of soft gray material. Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Shavi, may I add a comment or a statement to your nice description? Yes, yes, sir. I think uh, it's depend on the, you know, the, uh, our definition from the technology. If we consider technology as an instrument for education, that's, you know, very simple definition and very simple expression for training and education. But if we consider technology as a part of, as a philosophy of education, as a theoretical perspective uh, of the education, in that, this case, you're completely right. So it's different on our definition and our expression about the technology. Uh, uh, if we consider the second, you know, 
connection of the technology uh, in order to you know create the philosophy in order to define in order to express the philosophy of training and education in different courses doesn't matter TWET or the formal you know graduate courses or other courses so in this point you're completely right and it's a great description you have raised thank you very much most great do you agree do you agree with my statement oh, i think it's a perfect statement see technology yeah. You see, what's happening yeah. is that technology is driving. It's a, it's a race, almost like oh, a yeah, hunter. Yeah. That's good. It's, it's like a race between the hunter and the hare. The hare runs forward, the hunter chases him. Hare turns into one corner, hides into a bush. Same way technology is constantly moving forward. And we're chasing it all the time. The time will exactly. come, and I regret to say that I'm old-fashioned. I'm very fond of technology, but I'm more fond of human element, the composition, the mental intellectual capacity, the cap capacity to be able to think clearly without the help of digital technology, for example. Yes, we, sure, should rely, sure. we should rely on our capabilities. More, because one day what happens, like this morning or yesterday I was doing a webinar, there was a lot of technical difficulties. So technic technic technology is wonderful to assist we should not be servants of technology, we should be masters of technology. That is my objective. Thank you. Uh, thank, uh, thank you very much. Let us hear from Dr. Ziad Zadeh. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, hello, uh, Dr. Zadeh and uh, all the participants. Thank you very much for uh, this webinar. I, I wanted to have a comment on uh, Dr. Eftikhar's uh, comment on uh, smart technologies. Uh, this is an open question. New smart technologies, will they make us smarter or the way around? I think evidence is not enough now. And in future, this question will be answered uh, with more evidence. So, so we, we shall wait. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Zadeh, for your comments. Uh, we have two more questions. The one from uh, Bir El Sheikh Bad. It's mentioned that can we consider medicine as a TV form of education or not? Are they similar sure. or different? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, it's uh, it's depend on the you know which uh, with which uh, education system we are dealing with formal one or informal or informal. If we are dealing with the formal one, yes, uh, some part of formal one, uh, formal uh, education system in the field of medicine or healthcare and the you know, medical sciences. Yes, we exactly, uh, in this uh, webinar, in this uh, you know, meeting, we exactly dealing with the medical science. And the medical education is the way of designing and uh, uh, implementing and uh, evaluating of the uh, TWOT uh, program in the field of medical science. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. And the last question is from Bir Ibrahim Bolo. It's mentioned that can we recognize the simulation program as a part of TVET? Sure, sure. Uh, actually, because of the shortage of time, I couldn't, you know, explain the different new and modern technology that they can use uh, for Tibet uh, or vocational and you know, technical training, and especially uh, simulation. It doesn't matter which kind of uh, generation that simulation has, but most of the simulation. Uh, has very you know uh, effective impact uh, on the training of the skill and for skill development of the trainer. Yes, we, we, uh, indeed we uh, can consider uh, worry you know as a new and modern uh, technology uh, in the field of Tibet, new Tibet program. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate all of you for this wonderful presentation. And I'm uh, very 
grateful to IMI and Saudi International Virtual University, Professor Shabi Saidi, Professor Molazam Bukhari, uh, Dr. Tabas Tomzaha, Ms. Shafa Abbas, and Dr. Mubashar Ifdikhar for all the wonderful job that they do for conducting this webinar. Thank you very much, Dr. Saidi, again for everything and wish to meet all our great participants in the future webinars. Thank you very much for this webinar. Thank you, thank you very much for, for a nice effort. Thank you for the good moderator of this <laughs> meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thanks, Ahmed. Thank Dr. you, Dr. Farazade. Thank you, and and uh, 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 Miss uh, Sara Shahbazi as well, and of course, Dr. Shole uh, again for an amazing webinar. And we're so thankful to have you, and um, so grateful to have you know everyone's expertise this morning. Uh, I would like to just for uh, for our um, friends in the audience share the next upcoming events. We have an event coming up on March 27th. Um, let me just share that here. Uh, we have an event on uh, March 27th uh, uh, from SIVU on adult congenital cardiology um, by Dr. Ali Nasser Zedi, um, followed by an event And I apologize. Um, just for our um the people that are still here, um, I am uh, I am I SIVU um are hosting international conferences in medical education from April fifth to 9th, uh, th this next month. Um, so the first will be Monday, April fifth, um, with the University of Karbala, College of Medicine. Um, then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, April 6th, 7th, and 8th with ERA University of India, um, virtual international conference for health professions education, health professionals of tomorrow, agents of educational reforms. And finally, Friday, April 9th uh, with the American University of Barbados, the global conference for health professional educators. So please visit our website for more information on that. And uh, we have one final um, sharing of uh, an event that we're co-hosting with IMI UK on healthcare professionals in the digital world on Sunday, March 28th. So we will share all of that on the WhatsApp and on our website, and we would love to have you all there. Thank you and see you in two weeks. Thank you, Dieter Schiffer. Thank Great. you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.